Big bounce to get things underway. Hoffett in ruck against Crosley. And already O'Sullivan, as you would expect, over the top of the ball, but making sure he's going nowhere is Woodcock. And we'll get a secondary ball up to start this game. It's going to be a big challenge today for young Tom Hoffett. He's coming up against two monsters in Braden Crossley and Fraser Thurlow, two really uh, strong, big ruckmen, mature ruckmen against a, a young, inexperienced ruckman. And both in great form as well. It was the ruckman Crosley getting his own clearance, a high one and a half forward, but a free kick will go Port Melbourne's way here to be taken by Zane Carter. Into the side today, coming off. Pretty good win against the Northern Bullants last week at Kramer Street. Now we're looking at Harvey Hooper. Averaging nearly 23 touches a game this year, Harvey Hooper. Been in this Port Melbourne fold for a while. Free kick as the ball was in flight. And the advantage is paid here for Southport. Spencer giving it to Joyce. Going through the corridor here. Thurlow to target, but he was bowled over. No Jacob Townsend in this lineup today for the Sharks. That's a big out for the visitors, Dan. We've got a free kick here for Port Melbourne. Harvey Hooper again. Also no Zach Foote, so two decent players out. So you've got to ask yourself, where will Southport get their goals? Potentially Billy Gowers is one player who they'll rely on to hit the scoreboard. Jay Lockhart kicked the three last week as well in that win. Come from behind win against GWS as Templeton sends the borough inside 50. Crosley's been busy early. That's a barrel that's gone 60. And one Ruckman to another. Thurlow almost took the mark, but the informed Phillips is on him at the moment. And we've got a ball up here. Ethan Phillips will be one to watch in the back line today. He's intercepting everything at the moment. 30 touches and 14 marks last week. Averaging 23 touches a game and 11 marks for the season. He's been outstanding. Woodcock, Thurlow, Bokey. Runs into trouble immediately. Zeus has got him wrapped up, but he got his hand pass out. Now it falls to Harvey Hooper. And and Port, ball up. Yeah, Port Melbourne have really got to watch those stoppages. We saw Southport's key midfielders, Dawson and Woodcock and Thurlow, getting the clearance at that last uh, stoppage. Templeton couldn't get to the ball because in his way was Salisbury. We do talk of Ethan Phillips. Looks like Ethan Phillips might be starting on Fraser Thurlow. So it'll be a really good challenge for Ethan, playing in a guy who has a little bit of a different body shape, perhaps, to some of the plays he's, he's been playing on. It's just about best on ground against the Bull Ants last week was Phillips. We've got back-to-back -back stoppages here. A game that is still scoreless at ETU Stadium. And we talk about Southport's uh, midfield group, but Port Melbourne and Adam Scrobelak, uh, they base their game on contested footy as well. There's a whistle in all the congestion. Away was Dawson, but I think it's going to be a Port Melbourne free kick. No 50, O'Sullivan to claim it. Yeah, first year coach Adam Scrobelak here at Port Melbourne, he identified that last year Port Melbourne were really, really poor at stoppage and a contested ball. So that's one thing he's really come in and, and put his imprint on the club. Cameron's kicked down the line. Cinderella underneath it, but there's a man coming across in front tape. Couldn't take the marks out. Port ball here, Williams. It goes along the ground back to Cameron. And now Wagner, nice kicking board for Templeton. Back to Corey Wagner now. Goes short, Lentini. They're too far from home here. Wagner getting another touch. He goes low inside 50, but it's going to be picked off by Mackenzie Willis. You see there, that's the way Port Melbourne try and use the ball. They do always look in board for those short 30, 40 metre kicks and try to use the middle of the ground. Unfortunately, just a poor entry into their 50 there. Williams to the wing. Gow is affecting the contest, but he was up against Burke on that occasion. Southport ball here. Gowers gets it back. Over the head of Phillips, and there was a Southport player waiting at the back. Jay Lockhart might be within range. He was practicing some shots before the game from this very spot. Yeah, Jay Lockhart, the ex-Melbourne player, uh, played 22 games for Melbourne, had a very unfortunate injury last year. Uh, we'll say it's an injury that men get, and not women. Uh, and that hampered last year for Jay. Three goals and 23 touches against the Giants last week. Kicks it from the digits. That's our first score of the day, but it's only a minor one for the Sharks. 
Yeah, Jacob Dawson already three touches in this game uh, for Southport. He's the key midfielder, uh, averaging 31 disposals in the VFL and 35 last week. Nine games for the for the Gold Coast Suns, the 22-year-old. Wiedemann looking to run out of the square. Big left football. Hoffert underneath it. Couldn't take the mark. Crosley might have got a hand on it in that contest. Manson gets tackled. You see him prominently inside 50, trying to clunk some marks today. Hooper at the moment trying to work it out back to Hoffert. Now Lentini has a man all by himself in the middle of ETU Stadium. Kuchinotta can run and go, but his kick is very shallow. The mark was dropped by Tate. He gets the one-two here. Now it's Mantid, in fact. And he'll kick it toward the wing. We've got a one-on-one. My mark was taken there for Stackelberg. His kick was then smothered. Reinhold looking to switch. And they've had plenty of numbers on the fat side here, Port Melbourne, so far. Kuchinotta kept it moving. Now Wagner going inside 50. And now Fletcher Roberts can perhaps line up for the bar. And that's a better ball move. That, well, it's actually a better entry is probably what I would say there. They do look to switch the ball nearly every time Port Melbourne. The first two inside 50s were cut off by uh, Southport defenders, but I reckon that was a much better kick, making uh, Reese Clark, the experienced Southport defender, uh, work hard. They're on the board at Borough. That's a big goal from Roberts. He's kicked five goals in his last two games, uh, Fletcher Roberts. He's also a, an experienced player. We know that he played 51 AFL games and, and played in that premiership for the Western Bulldogs in 2016. So we've got a 27-year-old in Fletcher Roberts playing on a 29-year-old in Reese Clark. Uh, also Seb Tate, who's one of the key defenders for Southport, is a 29-year-old. Both teams have been on the attack. Nice free-flowing start to this game. Fletcher Roberts now has nine goals, two on his year. It's been super efficient in front of the sticks. Good bounce to restart play as well. Legal Shepherd though in the right contest and Brisky's going to get the free kick here. Into the side today is Jack Brisky. Goes long and direct. There's no one really there, though, for Port Melbourne. Falls to Signorello. He was off balance with his kick, though. Yeah, Southport are really going to have to watch Matt Signorello. He's good in the air, but he's also quite electric on the ground. So very difficult matchup for a Southport defender. Whereas Clark had to go fetch the Sharon. On to the trusty left, he goes. The Sharks are going to be happy to work the outer side. Manti. Down the line. Gowers takes a nice mark in front of Burke. So they've got it to the wing here. Now they'll cut in board. Boyd Woodcock. Bit of a rushed handball. Spread wide to Searle. And now it's going to be sent forward by Clark. Almost at 50 here, Southport. Ball ended up with Fields. He quickly went around the corner into the hot spot. Thurlow goes up. Didn't bring it down. Then there's a whistle. Port Melbourne's way. A really clean ball movement by, uh, there by Southport. Uh, that's one thing Port Melbourne are going to be really, really on the ball with today. Just, just making sure they're putting pressure on Southport because their ball movement is really, really clean. The kick was intended for the smallest man out there in Anthony Anastasio. He was up against Willis. It goes out of play. That's probably the difference between the better sides in the VFL competition is uh, the ability to, to be clean and be one touch in those clinches. So it's 5th v 14th on the ladder. And Southport looks to take advantage here. Foon goes inside 50. And here's our first intercept mark to today for Phillips. I think you might see a few more of those from Ethan Phillips today. He's had 41 marks in the last three games. He's outstanding at Kramer Street last week. Burke into the goal square, back to Phillips. He gets told to play on. Might have come off his line. Had to dump it out quickly. Anastasio sharking it. Now Wiedemann 
Rushed left football toward the wings. Okay, Manson. Has good marking ability. He did display that last week against the Bullants. Over the top, but too high for Anastasio. Templeton now set a task. Anastasio had fallen up, and now it's a chance for Harvey Hooper. Gets onto the right boot. He normally eats those for breakfast, Harvey Hooper. A really good forward of centre. You want the ball in his hands on most occasions. This is Heron. Gets around Hooper. Kicks intended for Thurlow. Big fist on the ball though by Stackelberg. Comes back to Wiedemann. Stackelberg again. Just might have put Burke under a bit of pressure. Sharks have just uh, swelled around this contest in numbers. Mopai is setting up holding the ball here. And a free kick will go Stackelberg's way. Over the top, intended for O'Sullivan. That was a tough one to mark. He did well against Crosley. Both teams looking to cut in board when they can. Turnover comes here up for Southport. Reeves to Fields. It's an empty square, but Phillips is tracking it back. It bounces sideways and stays in play. Already four touches for Phillips. This one's going to be a handball. Reinhold. Able to escape the clutches of Gowers. Now Wiedemann to O'Sullivan. The kick had to be precise there for Zeust. Ground level ball. Burke's under pressure. Didn't dispose of it. Nice tackle laid there by Jay Foon. Yeah, Tommy O'Sullivan, the, the captain for Port Melbourne, a couple of turnovers there. He's trying to do the right thing. He's trying to bring the ball in board. But just unfortunately, he's made a couple of skill errors. Foon's kick to a one-on-one. -on -one. That's going to be a mark paid. And Max Pescud can line up for the Sharks. Max Pescud might be a low-possession player, but what he can do is he can take a mark. He's a difficult matchup. He's a goal kicker. 11 goals, four for his season. This would level the ball game. 12 and a half minutes in. Max Pescu, it's off the side of the boot, it's going to land in plate. And it's easy pickings this time for Hoffert. Yeah, good to see Hoffert get involved early here. I've been really impressed with his uh, groundwork and, and now he's getting back in defence and helping his defenders. Might have been a push in the marking contest. Signorello is going to claim the free kick for Port Melbourne. Interesting choice for the long sleeves today in this sunshine. Concedes a bit of ground to Phillips. Now Reinhold. It's a high possession game that Port Melbourne are happy to play inside defensive 50. Wiedemann. That kick's okay over the top for Zeus. Still inside defensive 50. Fletcher Roberts, the only goal kicker in this game. And it's his goal that Port Melbourne leads by. Wiedemann. Waiting for something to present. Went toward the wing. Kuchinata had a couple of sharks around him. Gow was it overrun it. Searle does well. But his kick stays low. And that yes. is intercepted by Jack Johnston. Yeah, Southport have really done their homework here on Port Melbourne. Port Melbourne, as I said before, want to come inside all the time. But Southport are just blocking that corridor. Not allowing them that inside kick. Dan Winkle on special comments today. Dawson. Hand pass. But Lentini... Combines with Carter for the tackle to force a stoppage for the Borough. And they do have some nice kicks in their back 50 for Melbourne. I mean, Wiedemann's a nice kick. Ryan Hold, Ethan Phillips, all good distributors of the ball. Crosley that might have been touched off the boot. It's trickling toward half forward. Cameron. Hooper eventually collects it off the deck. Again wants to cut in board, but it's an interesting kick. Going up was Heron. Borough ball here, Kuchinotta tried to set one up for Hoffett over the top, but he was set a task. Southport ball once more, Tate sending it out wide, reading it better in flight was Burke, and he can go for a dash. Takes one bounce, wanted to quickly get it to his markers inside 50. Over the head of Gasper though, Bokey on cleanup duty, but it's going to come back in. That was sprayed off the side of the left boot, Port Melbourne ball. 
Yeah, Kwabi Boki. You just saw him uh, kick that ball out in the full. A very, very quick player. Watch out uh, for some highlights from Kwabi today. Kuchinotta going inside 50. You saw the long sleeves of Signorello trying to reel it in. But they repel once more here to Sharks. Willis. Woodcock now. They do it well. They're already inside 50. Thurlow's going to be caught behind though here. The mark was dropped by Reinhold. Maybe a chance for Thurlow. Reinhold, Reinhold got the tackle on him. Good pressure here by the Borough. Fields out to Gowers. Thought about a shot. But had no space. Nice break of the tackle there by Heron. Keeps it low, but it goes across the face. Yeah, they are rolling a lot of their players up the ground, Southport. So you, you will see quite a few of those kicks into the 50 where both forward and back are running backwards towards the footy. Johnston. O'Sullivan. Port Melbourne skipper. Fifth touch of the game coming up. For O'Sullivan. Crosley gets it back for Southport though. Game it's only seen the one goal, but it has been fairly entertaining so far. Ball zipping around. Phillips again with the intercept mark. He's picking up where he's left off. He's having a great year. Yeah, he's up to four marks, Phillips already. This is Wagner. Not sure Cameron was expecting that. I'm not sure Wagner meant to kick it off the instep. In front of the scoreboard, which has the bar up by five points. Just the two wins to their name this season. Southport's record, the inverse of Port Melbourne's there at five and two, and fifth on the ladder coming in. One on one, no mark taken, but brilliantly sharked by Fields, and he gets Southport's first. And that came as a result of another stoppage, a boundary line stoppage. Jacob Dawson, I believe, first hands on the ball. Quick kick into a really dangerous spot. And a nice goal by Tom Fields. In fact, I think Tom Fields kicked the match winner, Adam, against the Western Bulldogs a few weeks back. The five-point victory. The VU went over. That was a famous win, that one, because they'd had a delayed flight. Southport trying to get into Victoria that day. The game was delayed. Ended up winning what was a famous victory against Footscray that night. Well, I can tell you they've had a better preparation today. They actually got here yesterday and they stayed in the city, in the, the Ibis in the city, and they all got a, a nice sleep, which is a, a much better preparation. They'll be back home next week, a big game against the Brisbane Lions. Port Melbourne will get a week off next week before taking on Williamstown on June 5 right here at ETU Stadium. We'll go again in the middle. Crosley doing all of the ruck work so far for Southport. Holding in the ruck. Bit of ruck lotto going Southport's way here. Oh. It's not going to be the ruckman to claim it. It's going to come back to Gowers. Somewhat of a helicopter ball inside 50. Pescu couldn't mark it. There's a number of players around this ball. Umpire calls for a stoppage. Look, they're a proud club, Southport, aren't they, Adam? Uh, they had the unfortunate death of a long-time stalwart in, in Doc McKenzie. Uh, last week, he passed away on the Friday before last week's game against GWS. They were two points behind there at three-quarter time. And I think they found something for Doc McKenzie. They won by 27 points in the end. Yeah, they were down by two points at three-quarter time against GWS on Sunday. Tough six-day turnaround for both sides, but particularly for the Sharks, having had to jump on a plane for today's game. It's going to be dumped out of D50 by Kuchinotta, but only go as far as Spencer. Spreads it out wide for Manteep. Two kicks from home here to Sharks. Inside 50 we go. Ball had fallen to Wagner. The Fraser Thurlow had him claimed pretty quickly. And it's the game of modern footy, isn't it? The, the deepest defender is actually past the centre line. So all players in one half of the ground. Thurlay doing the ruck work. Has the ball. He's in his area here. He'll have to go again. 
Joint battle with Hoffett. Get that one to Hoffett. Wagner goes around a corner to try and clear it out, but the other Southport Ruck takes the mark. It's Crosley. No wind to speak of here today. Probably just a touch beyond his range. The mark's been set at about 52 out. No leads currently on offer. Braden Crosley will line up. Can he get the genie from here? It's going to land in the goal square. Through some hands out the back and through for a rush behind. Yeah, I think we were, uh, you might remember watching Braden Crosley play as a, an 18 year old for the Gold Coast. And, and uh, he played 10 games for them and he was a monster back then, Adam, wasn't he? And now he's uh, at the age of 22, put on a few more kilos. Hand Thurlow having fantastic seasons as the bigs for Southport as Wiedemann is happy to go boundary side on that outer side. It goes out of play. Thurlow's averaging nearly 33 hit outs a game and 13 touches to kick the four goals this year. Nearly 28 hit outs on average for Braden Crosley this year. He's kicked four goals, averaging 13 touches a game. They're having their impact. The Sharks bigs were inside 54 then once more. Zeus spinning away from danger. Did well. Lentini dumps out. Out of wing ball. Has Kuchinotta given away a free kick? He has. It's going to be claimed by Spencer. Just looking to slow things down for the moment. Down the line kick. Thurlow stayed down and claimed the mark, but wants to get on with it quickly. Gave it off by hand to Joyce. He rushed one inside 50. Ball was kept in play nicely. Smothered kick, though. Goes out of bounds on the ricochet. And once again at that last boundary throw in. And we saw Crossley win the tap. Boyd Woodcock involved. So I think Adam Scrobelak at quarter time will be just saying to his mids and his ruckman, let's just try and even it up there. They really are uh, beating us at those clearances. Almost kicking in danger there, committed by Kuchinotta. Phillips on the last line of defence, finds Hooper. Adam Scrobax comes out of the box and comes down to the bench to have a chat to his charges. Just into time on of the first quarter. Hooper, a bit indecisive, eventually forced to go long and down the line. And two attempts, the one-hander for Manson did well. That's his strength, Archie Manton. He is a low possession player, but he is such a good contested mark. Looking ahead, a lot of players converge at the pack. Anastasio read it well, crumbed it nicely. Now Templeton almost ran out of room quickly, went around the corner. Was there a push there? Zeus ended up with it. Free kick advantage paid, and it goes to waste for Port Melbourne. And such good play by Anthony Anastasio there. I know he's a veteran in this competition, but they really wanted him to get a lot cleaner with his ground balls over the last few years, and he's done that. He's such an important part of this Port Melbourne team. Pescu going down the line. Reeves. Made his debut last week against the Giants. Now trying to work his way through his Lockhart. And on the left, he kicks Southport second. Yeah, the ball can really slingshot quickly on this ground. You know, 30 seconds ago, we saw Cody Zeus having a shot for goal. And then 30 seconds later, Jay Lockhart puts one through the big stick. So you've got to really be aware as a mid, if you can't influence the play, will, will you be able to stop the opposition mids from slingshotting it up the ground? Eli Templeton currently the highest ranked player on the ground. Has the five touches. Ethan Phillips has the six to go with four marks. And Crosley and Fields both have six each for Southport, along with Boyd Woodcock as well. So after conceding the first goal of the game, the Sharks out to a handy little eight-point lead now. Lentini down to Templeton. Short ball's intended for Hooper. It's being harassed, though, by Williams. Templeton again, got it from Cameron. 60 out, 
Centering ball for the hot spot. Signorello in front position. Anastasio, can he make something happen? The little left red rocket. Hit the post. Oh. Well, he celebrated there as if it was a goal, but it might, might have just scraped the post at him. Or it was touched. I think the umpire signaled the touch, but it looked like it hit the post. Well, nonetheless, we just see how dangerous Anthony Anastasio is when the ball hits the ground in the 450. Bokey. Two on two at the landing. Hooper. Burke. O'Sullivan. Port Melbourne. Been able to play a lot of rebound footy off halfback. Anastasio again. Not a great kick intended for Signorello. It just bounced away from him. Now he's in battle with Searle as it approaches the boundary line. I think Adam Scrobelak would be mentioning that mentioning the kick inside 50. Okay, they've really moved the ball well again off halfback. But just that last kick, it's got to be cleaner. Risky in Rock against Thurlow. Who started inside defensive 50. Searle. It's a nice kick to the wing. In front position, Lockhart takes the mark. The game's most recent goal kicker. It's cut off here by Gasper. Another one is probably a bit too far up the ground from where Adam Scrobelak would like him to be. Another one of those marking targets inside 50. Signorello kept that one very short. It was nicely taken by Brisky. Yeah, we saw Jake Gasper in that play. Uh, only his third game this year for Port Melbourne. He came off a suspension last year in his local football uh, competition and uh, had to serve that suspension for some time. Uh, he's one that Adam Scrobelak really likes. He really likes Simuello and, and him in, in the forward line. They look really dangerous with him. That was a nice goal by Brisky. Both of Port Melbourne's goals have come from that pocket at the Bob Bonnet end. Always good to see a Ruckman pushing forward as well. So he'll make Fraser Thurlow and Braden Crossley think twice about just sitting in the hole. Smart play by Jack Brisky. Pushing forward. And he'll do battle in Rocky against Thurlow from the restart. Eli Templeton already up to seven touches. He is involved in this centre bounce. It just bounces away from him, though. Won't get to the contest first. <laughs> nice short, sharp quarter. Only going to 28 minutes. And a good game of footy so far. Southport by point, 2-3-15. Port Melbourne, 2 to Coglu. And here's Dan Winkle, who was in the huddles at quarter time. Yeah, went out to Southport's huddle, Adam. Listen to Steve Daniel. Didn't say too much to them. I see assistant coaches did the talking, but he did talk about the pressure they're applying. He's really happy with that. And uh, you could see that in the first quarter with a number of turnovers and intercepts. So we're underway in quarter number two. It starts with the secondary ball up. Also interesting to uh, see Matthew Lappin and Matthew Primus as assistant coaches out there. For Southport, of course. Lantini's kick smothered off the ground there by Bokey. Dumped inside 50 by Wagner. Gasper, ball bounced nicely for him. Finds some space, goes around the corner and hits the post. He's a player they've got to watch Southport. He's a little mercurial, Jake Gasper. He's kicked five goals, five, that's now five goals, six for the season in only his third game. Scores level at ETU Stadium. Willis. Nice kick for Pescu. Must be on centre wing. Number of jumpers for the ball. Wagner's been very busy today. Kick around the corner from Carter. I don't think it had much of an intended target and it is paid deliberate. So it comes back to Pescu, but he rushed his kick. Port Melbourne get away with that. It's a neutral ball here. Eventually picked up. Lentini tried to go in board. Gasper falling over. Templeton there as well. Hooper. And pass out wide from Walker. And now Wagner toward the pocket. 
Still in play, Zeus looking to cut in board. Nice ball for Lentini. Yeah, they worked that ball out well through the stoppage there, Port Melbourne. Really smart hands, didn't panic. That's what Adam Scroblack want to see from them. Really clean hands and a good decision there by Cody Zeus to bring the ball in, in board. And Marcus Lentini having a shot for goal. Good ball use there from the Borough. Marcus Lentini having a good year. Averaging 25 touches, five tackles, and has kicked a couple of goals, and it'll stay that way for the moment. Came in today with two goals, two to his name for the season. Make that two goals, three. At the huddle, I did stand next to Braden Crossley, and I know I've mentioned him a few times before, but he is a mini Shane Mumford, if you will, Adam. Looks like Shane did. I had a little bit to do with him 15 years ago, and he's almost a dead ringer for it. Tape. That's an interesting ball. Fletcher Roberts gets a hand on it. Signorello couldn't get to the ball in time at ground level, though. Foon looking to get Southport out of danger and will do so. Found Dawson. Now Woodcock feigning the handball. Looking to find some space through the corridor. Nice Just kick. got his kick out in time. It was a nice ball indeed for Lockhart. Southport going inside 50. A shark had gone down just behind where the ball landed. And we're going to see Reese King line up for goal. So really lovely ball use there by Southport. We saw deep in defence, Foon's first kick and then bringing the ball through the middle. And that was a great kick by Woodcock, wasn't it? And now they're having a shot for goal. This would give Southport back the lead. That'll do. A couple of polite claps in the crowd. And the Sharks lead once more. Well, he can kick a goal, Reese King. He kicked three versus Werribee in round three. Uh, once again, a, a, a low possession player, but I think they rely on Reese's defensive abilities to keep the ball inside that 50. But now he's a recipient of some great work up the ground. All individual goal kickers so far today. Sixth goal of the year for King. Hoffett and Crosley will do battle in the ruck. That'll be after the umpire throws it up. Crosley trying to go over his shoulder. Woodcock, umpire sees a free kick. It's going to go Southport's way. Boyd Woodcock out of the middle. Just getting it long and direct inside 50. No mark was taken there. Pescu had dropped it. What does the umpire see here? An illegal tackle going Port Melbourne's way. He nearly clunked that Pescu. He's such a dangerous player deep forward for Southport. Phillips reclaiming it. Took those four marks in the first quarter. Having an outstanding season. Ooh, a high jump for the ball from Wagner. Phillips certainly made him work for it. Gets up slowly. It will be his ball. To the wing we go. Nancy keeps it alive. Got some pressure from Templeton. The mark has been claimed by Lockhart. Kicks into the mark. Some pressure here for Joyce. Trickling in the pocket. Pescu taken out by his fellow number 13. Well, I have some really lovely medium forwards. Southport, Lockhart, Pescu. Billy Gowers, so three or four really competitive guys in the air that are not necessarily monsters. Ball comes to ground from the boundary, throw in O'Sullivan. Now Phillips put down after the kick. It was marked by Tom Cameron, so it is a Port Melbourne ball downfield. Cameron now has it. Looking into the sun, but has nothing to go to. Gaspar 
underneath this ball. Hooper did well to shark it, got it back from Anastasio. Harvey Hooper in board, Zeus is his target. But got out marked by Manti. Goes out wide. Hescoot. It's been involved a bit. <laughs> Into attack once more for Southport. What's the umpire paying here? I think he might have paid a mark to Phillips. He just racks up disposals, doesn't he, Ethan Phillips, for a tall guy. Very, very impressive. Reads the play so well. Reinhold's in the goal square here for Port Melbourne. Once Templeton. Well measured ball for Eli. See how they always look lateral Port Melbourne. If they can't get it, they'll keep looking, keep looking, and then they'll just kick it down the line as a last resort. Southport zoning not making it easy for the borough coming out of half back. They seem to find that a little bit easier in the first quarter. It was well won back by Woodcock. Goes out of play now. Yeah, Tom Cameron, who just had the ball, the blonde headed wingman for Port Melbourne, a really interesting player. Plays very wide on the ground. Port Melbourne really like to hold their width with their wingers. So that means try and have them as wide as possible on the ground. Not controlling umpire sees a free kick here going Crosley's way. There's no use for this. It's his free kick. Manteek getting tangled up there with O'Sullivan. Joyce is his target. Might be just on the limit of his range here. Yeah, Jesse Joyce played 64 games for the Gold Coast. He's now 24 years old. He played mainly as a defender when he was at the Gold Coast. But Southport use him predominantly as a midfielder. It'll be a game high 11 point lead for the Sharks if he can get this, but was never confident at that distance. A couple of flies for the ball, but no mark was taken. King trying to extract it. What's the umpire say here? Holding the ball. Wow. Southport free kick in the pocket. The shot is going to be taken by Tom Fields. As you said, Adam, gorgeous day. Looking down to the pickets, and I see Olivia Appleby, the uh, girlfriend of Archie Manton. I see the, the Manton family, uh, Katrina, Archie's mother, who's uh, I think she owns an art gallery or two in the area. Fields goes left foot banana and kicks the goal. Sharks by 11. Yeah, they're really, really competitive around the ball, aren't they, Southport? They don't give you an easy clearance, and they do like to keep it in their 50. They're, they're very much a workman-like team. They like to get down and dirty. <laughs> Two goals now for Tom Fields. Sharks lead by 11. They've started the second term well. going to be Brisky up against Thurlow on the ruck here. Good bounce to restart play. Big fist on the ball there by Thurlow. It's going to work out. Gowers already inside 50 for two in a minute. Billy Gowers. Sharks by 17. You often see that sort of hit out at, say, under-16s football. The big, strong ruckman just bashing it forward. And it does work from time to time. I don't think you'll see it too often. But when it comes off, it looks brilliant, doesn't it? And uh, Billy Gowers, the recipient of some great ruck work by Fraser Thurlow. Hasn't spent much time in ruck so far. Played nearly all the first quarter inside forward 50 as a marking target. So it'll be interesting just to see what Port Melbourne do here. I think they'll just try and get a 50-50 or close it down a little bit at this stoppage. I don't think you'll see Fraser Thurlow trying to bash it forward here. Billy Gow is up to 11 goals for his season. We're back in the middle once more, and they'll get the clearance once more here to Sharks. Dawson this time towards half forward, but the drop mark there. 
Ball's ended up with Joyce. Fields for number three onto his favourite left. But he was running away from the goal face. And to really simplify it, that is Southport's game. Win the ball at the stoppage and let the rest take care of itself. And this will be Port's first touch since conceding two goals, one in the space of a couple of minutes. Reinhold. Long ball. Almost gets it to centre wing through the hands of Thurlow. Reclaimed by Clark out the back. Boki picking it up off the ground. Escaping the tackle from Anastasio. Ball was along the ground intended for Joyce. Ended up with Salsby. Wide kick though. No one there for Southport. Looks to me as if Port Melbourne's defensive pressure has just dropped off a little bit. They do have times and periods in games where it can just drop off for five minutes and they do get hurt on the scoreboard. So if they can just get that back to say 50 50, Southport have kicked a few quick goals. They just don't want this to get away from them. Fletcher Roberts has nothing ahead. And it was a really difficult one to navigate for food in the air. Anastasio now. Finds a way around Boki. Wants Zeust. He took a long time to arrive. And Manteek got a fist on the ball. Thurlow trying to fan the handball out. Lentini got it from Templeton. Out wide we go. Brisky going inside 50. The bounce was looking to favour Manton there. Goes through for a minor score. But once again, great work by Anthony Anastasiou. The... Uh, the little forward for Port Melbourne. It was a three on one, then a four on two, and then he still won at that outer side. So really good work. Unfortunately, they didn't score from that. Foon's kick, hoping to find Gilmore. Comes to Williams. In board we go. Ball up. Southport really well organised behind the ball here. Very experienced back line, average age of 27. Not controlling umpires see something out of the rock contest. Jesse Joyce with the free kick. Left football inside 50, and it is marked by Gilmore. Yeah, we saw a game here few weeks ago versus Richmond, Adam, where this, a similar thing happened. Richmond got control of the game in the middle of the second quarter, kicked three or four really quick goals. Port Melbourne did really well just to peg it back. Uh, so what they did, they a lot of slow plays, denied the ball from the opposition, and it might be interesting just to see if they do that again here. Just chip it around, keep it out of Southport's hands for a little while. Kick was sprayed to the right for Gilmore. Wiedemann to bring it in for Port Melbourne. Phillips. And again, so hard for Port Melbourne to pick their way through this structure that Southport have got set up across their half forward line. Back with Wiedemann, short to Wagner. And he has nothing to go to down. No, but this is what they want to do, Port Melbourne. They just want to retain possession, take some time off the clock. O'Sullivan, Lantini, had to navigate his way through some pressure. Cameron going down the line. Zeus, he's tackled. And that's holding the ball. Free kick for the Sharks Ooh, that on could the be outside. He made a penalty there, I believe. Going for a 50 metre dash to take his kick is Cal Searle. Now, even the under 16s that I coach would know that you can't put the ball on the ground. That is always going to be a 50 metre penalty. Yeah, there's been a big crackdown on time wasting <laughs> in those sorts of situations this year. So, Callum Searle now to give Southport a 24 point lead. Approaching time on in this second quarter. Four goal ball game in favour of Southport. And you might see the over enthusiastic response there to Southport. That's because Callum Searle is playing against his old team. 
He's only played one match this year for Southport, so that'll be a big boost for his confidence. Six five to two five. And some work to do for Adam Scroblack's men. I think he'll be really dirty on that player. I'm not sure if it was Cody Zeus. I don't want to uh, dob him in if it wasn't, but the player on the outer side there, you've just got to hand the ball back to your opposition after a free kick. That's just a gift of a goal. Profit and Thurlow to do battle in the rack here. Guys didn't have to bounce it. We'll be away by now, but this tradition persists. This one won't be recalled. Heavily favoured Thurlow. Lantini got a very bad bounce now. Woodcock driven into the turf, holding the ball. Port Melbourne's way. The tackler was Wagner. They need a goal here, Port Melbourne. Lantini coming up for disposal number 12. Hoffert, Reinhold, didn't know where to go, Hoffert again, hand pass put Lantini under a bit of pressure, got tackled out of his kick, Lockhart regaining it for Southport, ends up with Willis, it was a nice little kick as well for Fields, onto the favoured left, up towards half forward, Crosley couldn't mark it, Woodcock immediately pressured, but got taken high. Clumsy attempt to tackle there by Wagner. Woodcock gets the free kick for Southport. The use of half-back Southport is exceptional. And Michael Manteep, uh, fourth in their best and fairest last year. He's one of those players, just a smart reader of the play and then a good distributor. Thurlow could have marked it. Lockhart over the top of it. Ball's actually loose. And now it gets... Wrapped up for a ball up. A number of bodies over the top of the ball there, Dan, but the Sharon itself was just sitting there on the deck, untouched, before the umpire called for that stoppage. Hoffett attempted to clear it out, but couldn't get Boots a ball. Now he'll contest the ruck. Yeah, I think Southport coach Steve Daniel will be absolutely del delighted with their contest work. Interestingly, three leading ball getters on the ground are all Borough players, despite being down by four goals. Kick to the middle of ETU Stadium. Signorello gave up his handball. It was picked off by Foon, who went high. Ball socket off the ground by Kuchinotta. Ends up with Zeus. It was dropped by Kuchinotta, but had time to recover. Had Foon in his face. Zeus needed to help out. He couldn't get boots a ball. To see pressure winning out there for Southport, but then leaving it behind was Reeves. Foon now, one way than the other. Smothered over the line by Kuchinotta. I think that phrase, perceived pressure, is, is the correct phrase to use, Adam. What Southport do is they go at the guy with the footy and they make them make a decision. And unfortunately, Port Melbourne at the moment just don't have the poise to work the ball through. All thrown in. Bit of a hold on the jumper there for Thurlow. Umpire did see it. Woodcock, advantage pay. Down the line we go. And a mark is taken by Salsby. Chipping ball toward the pocket. Crosley's his target. Phillips is there with him. Neither could mark it. Phillips wanted the line and found it. Yes, and we've got some parochial Port Melbourne supporters here in the stands uh, disputing a few decisions, but... Uh, I would have thought that was a free kick in the ruck. Young Tom Hoffert just grabbing the jumper again. There's been four or five ruck infringement free kicks. Kuchinotta dumping out but turning it over to Willis. Looking for a leading target. King provides and King marks. Very, very disciplined team, Southport. They set up well behind the ball. Look out, here's Fields, already has a couple goals. It's on its way. Wow. He's got three. And Southport leads by five. Well, that's some sort of left foot from Tom Fields. They played two games at Carlton in 2015, did Tom? He was actually raised in Queensland and 
Played a little bit of football in South Adelaide as well. But his left foot's been really damaging. That's his third goal. Around the grounds, Gold Coast leading Footscray by a goal, 5 3 33 to 4 3 27. Southport have kicked five goals in a row here. Gold Coast based teams having a good day so far in the early games in Smithy's VFL. Templeton. That was an interesting kick out wide, but it's regained by Kuchinotta. Nowhere near Signorello. The foot skills have really tapered off here for the borough in the second term, Dan. If you're going to score against Southport, you do have to have good foot skills, and they've just dropped off this last 15 minutes, Port, and they've paid the price, unfortunately. Thurlow and Hoffett in ruck. Hoffett got caught behind. Thurlow tried to get it down to Joyce, and in fact did so. Woodcock, look away, handball's okay. Ball sent to Ward half forward, but it's bouncing away from Locker. Interesting to uh, have a look at those clearance numbers, Adam. I don't have them in front of me at the moment. Wouldn't be surprised if they're well in Southport's favour. 16 11 Southport's okay. weight. Ball thrown in. I think Hoffett was able to get a hands on that one. Woodcock. Picks it up and gives it to Boki. Now Thurlow. There's a Borough player down in the foreground. Boki. Anastasio's got him. Yeah, he's been a shining light for Port Melbourne, Anthony Anastasio. But again, nothing to go to. Long down the line. I'm hoping that someone in a red and blue jumper will mark it. It goes out of bounds. Seven five forty seven Southport Port Melbourne two five seventeen three goals for Tom Fields. Boundary throwing. Thurlow grabbing it himself and then throwing it onto his right boot and it's marked by Crosley. The big starting Ooh. to dominate this game for Southport. Crosley going inside fifty. Wiedemann went down early. There was a push up by sees it. Free kick going Wiedemann's way. This is Burke for Port Melbourne. Only looking in board now goes down the line and the skipper provides the option. No Sullivan. Again. Into the middle of ETU Stadium. It's up for grabs in the centre circles. Stackelberg turns it over. Salisbury. Low right foot up. But a long way from home here is Reeves. Quickly into the pocket, running on towards Heron. So just be interesting to see if Port Melbourne change their tactic at, tactic at half time. They love to go through the middle of the ground, but Southport are owning it. So do they try something different, or do they just back themselves and keep trying it, make a few mistakes, but get some reward eventually? Jacob Heron. Decides not to shoot. There's a very late lead on offer. He goes short. And we're going to see a shot now from Reese King, who's got one from earlier in the quarter. He's on the right side for a left footer. So onto the preferred left, around the corner, into the post. I'd love one just before half time, Port Melbourne, just to get the confidence up. Feels like they haven't even been inside 50 for a while. Wiedemann. Only looking one way for the moment. Short down the line for Anastasio. Gilmore not getting there in time. Anthony Anastasio has to get around Gilmore and does so. Then takes a bounce, feigning a handball. Running it to true centre half back. Gasper back to Anastasio, but he's in traffic now. O'Sullivan did well to pick it up. And get the handball going. Gasper fumbled at the crucial moment. They've run it all the way to half forward and then a holding free kick going the Sharks' way. Okay, so eventually it's a turnover, but I don't mind what Anthony Anastasio did there. He took the game on, used the middle of the ground again, and it nearly came off. This is Jesse Joyce having a good second term. 
Pescud too far out to score, you would think. Shipping ball. And that's been a little bit too easy for Southport. Tom Fields is going for number four. Yeah, they're just getting them on the turnover or, or on the slingshot, as you might call it. Southport, I'd, I'd be disappointed if I was Adam Scrobblack with their defensive efforts. I'd be trying to bring the ball to ground as much as I can and just way too many marks. Forward of centre for Southport. It's on track to nearly double his overall output for goals this year. Three goals, one for the afternoon so far for Tom Fields. Kicked one from on the run in this set of range. Now he's got a set shot from this set of range. He's having an absolute day out. Four goals, 11 possessions. And that's before half time. Margins out to 37 points here. May have been completely dominant in this second term. It looks Steve Daniels men. If you have a look at their ball winners, it's evenly spread. You know, Jesse Joyce with 12. Fields, who just kicked the goal there, he's had 11. Woodcock, 10. Pescu, 10. So not huge numbers. But they're just playing so well as a cohesive unit. Crosley back into the ruck now for Southport against Hoffett. Got an early jump, but Crosley won the tap. Woodcock gets the clearance. Again, they're going inside 50, Southport. Plenty of work to do here for Walker. Reeves ended up with it. Stankelberg brought him down. I think if you were to compare them to an AFL side at the moment, Adam, I would say maybe compare Southport to Fremantle. Just contested ball beasts. Really disciplined. And really working for each other. They've been particularly clean with their entries as well in this second quarter. It was just a one-point ball game at quarter time. They've blown this one out of the water. Was there high contact there? There was, according to the umpire, Billy Gowers, to line up for Southport. Kicked a goal earlier in the quarter with the former Bulldog. He yeah, played 33 AFL games, did Billy Gowers, and in 2018, I think he led the goal kicking for the Bulldogs with only 20. He didn't have many goal kickers that year. Margin is 37 points before this kick. It looks like it's going to be 38. Billy, of course, is the son of ex Hawk Premiership player Andy Gowers. This is Wiedemann. Not sure of where to go. We've seen this all caught along for Port Melbourne. Kicked it to an under pressure Burke. The turnover comes. Lockhart for goal. Phillips on the line, though. They get away with that one, Port Melbourne, but now Ethan Phillips needs to find the right option by foot. Johnston wants to hug the boundary line on that out of sight. That's been the MO for the bar in this second quarter. Over the head of Hoffett. Roberts does well to find Templeton. Siren goes on Tom O'Sullivan as he received it from Carter. Sharks went bang six times unanswered in that second quarter. And they lead by 38 points at halftime, 8 7 to 2 5 17. Well, they look a little bit stunned, the Port Melbourne players, as if they don't know. And I say that on a full belly, Adam, because I've just demolished a Borough burger here at Port Melbourne, a very thick patty with a lovely, thinly sliced piece of beetroot. World famous Borough Burgers, get down and have one. There is a women's game here later today in the penultimate round between Port Melbourne and Collingwood, so still a chance to get down here and catch some footy and devour a Borough Burger as well. So the third term underway, and Woodcock gets a clearance out of the middle. 
Going inside 50, Hoffett gives it to Stackelberg and he'll spread it lateral for Walker. Off hands and out of bounds. Maybe not a great marking technique by Anthony Anastasia, who I think was one of Port's best players in that first half. He's tackling pressure. It's been helpful, but Port just couldn't get any flow going in the second quarter. Woodcock's starting to come into the game now. The scores this ball over the line. So we see already the first centre clearance for Southport and, and nearly the, the stoppage there going their way. And here we go again. Another touch for Woodcock. Tries to get it to Gowers. I think he got put down after the kick. So a free kick will go. Well, I suppose that counts as downfield. Gowers to claim it for Southport. Going inside 50. It was a low ball. And in fact, it was well marked by Burke. And he'll go across the face of goal. Phillips... On the last line of the fence here at the Fred Cook end of ETU Stadium. Wagner was busy in the first half. I did mention, Dan, that despite the dominance on the scoreboard for Southport, a lot of the individual disposal getters at the top of the leaderboard are Borough players. Well done. Well, High contact here is the call. Well, that's because they like to control the ball, Port Melbourne. So they'll have six or seven touches before Southport get their hands on the ball. But Southport are really efficient when they get the ball. Crosley going inside 50. Phillips affecting the marking contest that came off hands. Umpire's blown a whistle. I think there's a free kick here in the pocket going Southport's way. So we're going to get a shot at goal here. From Tom Reeves up against the fence. He's a young boy from Tasmania, Tom Reeves. Uh, played his first game last week, 13 disposals. And this is for seven in a row for Southport. Outside of the right boot. That's a beautiful ball. Got the angle just right. That's another banana goal in this game for Southport. 44 point ball game and only his fourth possession but a great little kick coming off the ground now isn't that uh, isn't that a shame when you've just kicked a, a goal I think that's his first goal in VFL football might, no actually it might be his second goal I did think he kicked one last week and then you have to come Correct. off and have a glass of cordial does it suck some momentum out of you and just some self confidence as well you're feeling good you've just kicked a goal and then you've got to come off immediately well, no one wants to come off the ground. But especially after even a goal, a, does it just take a little bit out of you? I think so. Yeah, I think so. But even at this higher level, regardless of what level you're playing, no one wants to come off the ground. So from the restart, Woodcock gets another touch. He's had a lot of it already in his third quarter. We go inside 50 once more. Johnston tried to get a fist on the ball. Reinhold gets the one-two going, combines with Carter. Anastasio now has it. Mark's taken by Brisky. Quickly going inside 50. Bokey might have lost it in the sun. Then he got some body-on-body -body contact from O'Sullivan. Gasper, one way to the other. Ran into trouble. Good defensive pressure here from the Sharks. Searle. His kick is smothered. It was spinning on top of the deck. Gasper. Brought down by Bokey. Didn't get a great handball out. Back with Searle. Hand pass over the top for King. We've got a free kick here for Southport. Do we have free kick statistics here, Adam? Because we'll try and track those down on the AFL website. Port Melbourne have given so many free kicks away whilst the ball in play. Towards half forward, Lockhart takes the mark. Inside 50 we go. This is Cameron. Carter. Back to Cameron. Runs it out of D50 pretty easily. Now Hooper. 
for those free kick stats, uh, 19 to Southport and 15 to Port Melbourne. So that's 34 in the game so far, edging towards 50. Hooper does well to get around foot. Backing back, he's Thurlow. Couldn't take the mark for the Sharks. Casper goes down heavily, as did Manti. Cameron following up. Hooper has Bokey for company. Cameron did well to turn Salisbury inside out. Nice jump at the ball, though, to reclaim it for Spencer. Some space for Bokey, but it's not a great kick. Cameron's going to put him under some pressure. Wins the ball back for the bar at Hoffett. Hooper. Two kicks from home. It'll land about 30 out. It's a very high ball as well. Umpire blows the whistle while the ball was in flight, and it's going to go Spencer's way for Southport. Yeah, if I was having a word to Kwabi Bokey about his game, it would just be to try and be a little bit more cleaner in the contest. Look, perhaps he did have the sun in his eyes a few minutes back uh, when he was attempting the mark, but in that last contest, just had to be a little bit cleaner. Jay Foon shorts it. Boyd Woodcock coming up for disposal number 15. It'll make him the leading ball getter on the ground, this kick. To a one-on-one. -on -one. Sharks gone down behind play. Gasper the target of the kick, but a fist on the ball there by Spencer. Woodcock up to another touch now, 16 or 17 for him. Ends up with Manti. All this by hand. Pescud gets it now. Ends up with Fields. Gets onto the favoured left. We're inside 50. Thurlow and Crosley were both there. The former takes the mark in scoring range for Southport. I was speaking to Mick O'Neill, who's a co-commentator, who commentated the Frankston Richmond game. Oh, sorry, the Frankston Richmond game, the Port Melbourne Richmond game a few weeks back, and he did notice that Port do get themselves in a little bit of strife on that run and carry. They just don't know how to defend that as well as they could. And as we saw, seven or eight chains of hand passes there from Southport, and now a shot from goal. Fraser Thurlow's kick is absolutely perfect. It is all sharks. Eight goals in a row since we had a one-point ball game at the first break today. So I'm thinking of some positives for Port Melbourne. I would say uh, in the back half, Will Reinhold looked look really composed. So has Ethan Phillips. I think Harvey Hooper has been really prominent and used the ball well. And as we spoke about, Anthony Anastasio hasn't had much of the footy, but he's doing a lot right. And he does look dangerous in those few times the ball's got into the Port Melbourne forward line. And Thurlow will go back into the middle to do battle with Hoffett in Ruck. Good bounce. Give the tap to Hoffett. O'Sullivan claimed straight away there by Joyce Hooper. Nice ball out wide. We now go inside 50. Walker's kick to a two-on-two. Signorello saw it go over his head. And that's another intercept mark for Max Spencer. He's had some day, Max Spencer. But good to see Port Melbourne winning a stoppage. Good play by Tom O'Sullivan, the captain, to get in really close, really tight. And get his hands on the footy first. Templeton just got a hands on that before it arrived. At the hands of Kwabi Boki. Yeah, they just need some small wins here, Port Melbourne. A few stoppages, a few contests. Maybe a goal on the board. Yeah, it's got to lead to some six-pointers, if there any chance. That's scoring win number three for their season. On ground level, Stackelberg put into the deck by JJ. Nice tackle by Jesse Joyce. Hoffett gets a hand on it. Dawson might have been held there. Hooper. Ball had fallen behind Dawson. Repeat stoppage. He reads the ball so well off the Ruckman's hand. Does Jacob Dawson. Number three for Southport. Some think he's leading the uh, competition best and fairest at the moment. The Liston Trophy. Sharks are without their 
star, former Liston Trophy winner today in Jacob Townsend. Now the round Fothergill Mitchell medal, Adam, that is for the most promising youngster in the competition. Boundary throw in. Well done. Hooper did well against Manteet, but smothered off the boot of Stackelberg. It ended up with O'Sullivan. Kept it low. And in towards Zeus, who got tackled out of his kick by Spencer. And you might just want to give that turnover to Spencer. No mark, though, was paid to Willis. So we've got a neutral ball just inside 50 for Port Melbourne. At what stage will Southport's pressure relent? We haven't seen it so far. It's a 50-point ball game for the visitors at the moment. Manteet riding Hooper. Like one of those mechanical bulls, Dan, from that tackle. Just inside the arc here. Burra needs a goal from this entry. Manteet will give it to Thurlow, and they'll dump it out once more. If it bounces over the line now, this could be deliberate. We saw a similar one paid in the second quarter. This one's not paid. Uh, fair enough, too. The rule reads that you have to be trying to keep the ball in play. Is that right, Adam? Don't know the exact wording. Us as watchers of the game are just trying to read intent almost from the disposer of the ball. Anastasio gets out of danger, gets a kick away. Roberts could have marked it though. What a dirty entry for Port Melbourne as opposed to when Southport go inside 50. And we're seeing the results on the scoreboard. Hooper does well, got rid of his man Whoa. and curled that one around the goalpost. Great goal for Harvey Hooper. Does that spark something for Port Melbourne? Well, it's a bit of flair, and that's what we want to see out of Port Melbourne. I think they just need to take the game on a little bit more, be a little bit less methodical, if you if you will. And a great contested ball win by Tom O'Sullivan to get the ball to Harvey Hooper, who I think has probably been one of Port's best today. 16 touches, three marks. A couple of tackles and clearances. Now a goal for Harvey Hooper. And we know the pockets here at Port Melbourne aren't so deep, so a kick like that is achievable. It can be a live wire for Port Melbourne. He's been in the side for quite a few years now. One of the more experienced heads out there for the Borough. He's in at it. He's sent a bounce with Lantini and O'Sullivan. It's Brisky in ruck. He and Crosley got tangled up and ended up on the ground. O'Sullivan standing tall in the tackle, but his hand pass only found Bokey. The kick going over the head of King, got pushed out of it. Advantage paid. Woodcock going inside 50. Getting a hand on the ball was Wiedemann. Attack ground level. Dangerous one here. Fields is in the region for the Sharks, and the Borough defenders will be well aware of that. Salesby out of nothing. Hits the post. We know that the mid-year draft is coming up soon. And if you check my Twitter feed, I don't want to put a number of names up there as possible mid-year draft picks from the VFL. But I look at Boyd Woodcock, and he wasn't on my list. And I'm thinking, hmm, I wonder if Boyd will have another go at AFL football if given the opportunity. He certainly looked impressive out here today. Hooper gets another touch here. Nice mark. And his kick goes wide for Cameron. Boundary throw in. The kick out came from Wagner. It was a nice ball to find Harvey Hooper. Woodcock's had 18 disposals and he's had so many clearances, particularly in this quarter. He's got five for the game. He's taken four marks as well, Dan. How's got AFL pedigree? Let's do so many of these Southport players out here today. Such a classy side. O'Sullivan to Wagner. Took a while to decide oh, well what to do. Was that high contact? And O'Sullivan umpire says no. But he did get dumped in the tackle. He'll get the free kick anyway. Had a really good five minutes here, Tom O'Sullivan. You can see he's just trying to will himself into the contest. It's not pretty, but he's had his hands on the ball three or four times in the last few he's minutes. He's now matched Hooper for 17 touches in this game. And it's a nice ball inside 50. We're going to see a shot at goal here for a man that's already kicked one today, Jack Brisky.
Is this the start of the comeback for Port Melbourne? A nice goal a couple of minutes ago from this sort of range. That was on the run and outside of the right boot from Harvey Hooper. Now Jack Brisky for his second. It's a right foot set shot. That's missing to the near side. And I think that's what the Port, Mel Port Melbourne faithful want to see from their team. Just crack in, have a real go. It sounds simple, I know. But they love their team here at Port Melbourne. Searle to Manteep, back to Searle and into the middle. Gowers, they're already halfway up the grounds here. Southport, Gowers kick. They're going to go coast to coast here. Might bounce all the way. If not, Lockhart oh. will finish. He fell over, oh. but the leather did meet leather, and it's a goal. Almost accidental for Lockhart. Well, you call it, Adam, coast to coast. That will be on the highlights reel. The, the mini match you'll see after the game. Wonderful ball movement there by Southport. A momentum killer as well for the home fans here. Yeah, they're very subdued now, aren't they, after that? They felt they were starting to get back into it. The margin is 50 points once more. Southport kicks six unanswered goals in the second quarter, which is essentially the difference in this game. Couple of goals now for Jay Lockhart. Perhaps could have left it bouncing all the way through, but it all counts for six points nonetheless. Hoffett rushes one inside 50 for Port Melbourne. It was a hard one for Signorello to mark. Here's Harvey Hooper working hard at ground level. But Foon wasn't letting him get anything easily there. Spencer has been so stern in defence today for Southport. Long to the outer side. Wiedemann affecting the contest nicely. Nice tap along the ground by Walker, finding Templeton. Awkward left foot ball goes high, but Gowers takes a nice mark. Yeah, they're so self-assured, those key backmen for Southport, aren't they? Spencer, in particular, has really impressed me today with his 14 possessions back there. Gowers sent the ball toward the outer side. Now Foon the target. Antini was perhaps thinking about the professional foul there. Still a Southport ball here. Rush shot at goal from Lockhart. He's well, well, well off target. So we talk about small wins, and the small win they have had is the last three or four centre clearances. That'll be something that they'll talk about at the breaks, I'm sure. Knocking on the door of the top four, Southport. The way this is going, four points and a bit of a percentage boost. We'll get another boundary throw in. Seems to shoot up to that 50-point lead, which they've had a couple of times, Dan, so quickly. It's a completely dominant second term from the visitors. Tough ball to win here. Foon couldn't get it. Woodcock extracting it. Gowers. Zeus with just enough pressure on Gowers. Umpire thought about paying the advantage as Hooper had it, but he was in tight quarters, and Zeus will be allowed to take his free kick. Ethan Phillips from the top of the goal square. He's in two minds. This is what we saw so much of in the second term, Dan. Port indecisive with their kicking out of the back half. So far so good though on this passage. It's Johnston that has it. Or Walker oh, yeah. Wild rather. Just precise enough for Lentini. That didn't go 15 for Templeton. Reinhold. They're just corralling them here, Southport. Just corralling them to make a mistake. Not a great option because O'Sullivan was the shortest among three players and the other two were opponents. Not quite getting the turnover though, Southport. Wiedemann was under pressure. O'Sullivan had followed up. Now Templeton. Gets his handball away. Carter. It's going to land at half forward for Port Melbourne, but punched as far as he can. Out of play by Clark. So in terms of disposals, Port Melbourne, whilst 50 points behind, actually lead the disposal count. And... Uh, 
we see in that back 50, six, seven, eight disposals to be able to get it out of there. That could be a prime reason behind that disposal count number. The Southport have just been so efficient when they get the ball. Dawson had it and lost it. Ended up back with Walker. Kick intended for Stackelberg. Hand pass to Wagner. Lentini. Burrow inside 50 again. Signorello looking into the sun but couldn't take the mark. Searle did well to intercept the ball. Bokey now. Clark. Mark was just dropped at half back there by Crosley. The tackle didn't stick though for the Borough. Lentini gets it back. Kicked up towards half forward by Kuchinotta. It was overrun though by Manton. Southport ball once more. Foon just too much on it for Woodcock. Reinhold was waiting for it out the back, but Woodcock did well to get back and get some of Reinhold's jumper. Now we'll see a stoppage as a result. They're just so good in turning a mistake into a 50-50 Southport. Even then with Boyd Woodcock, uh, you know, the kick went over his head. It was a turnover. Chance for Anastasio. He's got plenty of space. A great look at the sticks. The little man kicks his goal. It's his first. Anthony Anastasio just trying to keep the bar in it. Yeah, I'd suggest Anthony Anastasio is Port Melbourne's best player today. His first goal for the game, and he's played predominantly in that 50, but he's had 14 disposals. Looked really, really dangerous. Three marks, three tackles. He's got himself a clearance as well, the one goal one. But what I like about him is that he's, he's now a really clean player. He used to be a little bit fumbly below his knees, but now he's really, really clean. Margin is 44 points. There's no wins out there, Dan, but it does seem like that the Bob Bonnet end, which is right of screen for us today, seems to be the scoring end. Well, instead of being at Port Melbourne, you, you might feel like you're at the Southport ground. Now, maybe a, on the Banana Lounge and a bit of baby oil, but it's a, it's a gorgeous day here at Port Melbourne. There's not a breath of wind. That bounce is recall. It's going to favour Fraser Furlow pretty significantly had it not been recalled. Gets the tap here against Hoffett. Stackelberg though. Can't escape the clutches of Billy Gowers. Yeah, there'd be some disappointed Port Melbourne people. I was speaking to Erica O'Donnell before the game. Erica is a trainer at Port Melbourne. She just got life membership in 2019. Spent 15 years with the borough. She just loves the club. Hooper got inventive with his clearance. It was a soccer. Lentini then misses Hooper. That results in a turnover. Dawson going out wide. Clark onto the favoured left, out wide for Thurlow. Thought about maybe taking on Hoffert on the mark. Goes back by hand to Gowers. Gilmore the target. Free kick's been given away by Southport here. This is Eli Templeton. I like how they're still taking the game on through the middle though, Port. Keep doing that. 16 touches for Templeton. Lentini. He's coming up for 17. The former Coburg man. Back for Templeton. And the leading ball getters, some of the leading ball getters just touching up their stat sheets at the moment for the Borough. Templeton miscued the kick, but it's okay. It comes to ground. Dawson was the first to get it, but he was surrounded by Port players. It's been relatively quiet today. Dawson has the only the nine possessions. I think they've identified him as a, a key player and are probably just hitting someone on him. It's normally he and Woodcock that are able to extract it out of the middle and have big impacts through to midfield for Southport. Boyd Woodcock is having a good game. We're on the outer wing here. It's going to be a Southport ball to be taken by Manti. Happy to concede a bit of ground to Searle. Mackenzie Willis. Jay Thune. It's 
Some tempo footy from Steve Daniels' men. Back where we started with Manti. No Borough player near him, so he gained a couple metres before going long inside 50. What happened to ground level here? Gilmore was worried out of it. Woodcock, is he taken high? No, it's going to be holding the ball. Free kick for the Borough. Really interesting to see what Port Melbourne do. As soon as the ball is in 50-50, they always have one or two sitting off the back of the pack ready for the next possession. Almost like they're goalkeeping. This is Corey Wagner. A virtual kick in for him. Johnston. Can afford to go for a run after taking the mark. Wagner works his way up. Interesting handball for Lentini. That's a finds a way around Fields. Had some composure and now Stackelberg has it for Port Melbourne. Kick at centre half forward. Zeus almost lost that one in the sun. Quickly off to Templeton. Runs into trouble. Gets his kick out wide. Cameron, can he find an out number here? Gets around the initial would be tackler, but his kick only picks out Bokey. It's that perceived pressure, I think, with that last kick in the 50 once again. Nice, uh, nice footwork by Cameron, but just not a great kick. So now Michael Manteet goes for another run on the outer side, but it's a wayward kick. Barrett get it back. We're late in the third quarter. If they want a goal, they probably want to go direct and get one quickly here. 27 going in the third quarter. Wiedemann will be the man to send it in. Gasper, late jump at the ball. Might have landed awkwardly as well. Lantini looking to go around the corner. Ball stayed very low. And in fact, it was picked off by Searle, who's also been good in defence today for Southport. Max Pescud has come off the ground for Southport with what appears to be a, a bloody nose. This is Jesse Joyce. Thurlow, his target, just about the tallest man out there. Gilmore goes up, though. Thurlow just found himself out of position, holding the ball. Another free kick here for Port Melbourne to be taken by Corey Wagner. Nope. He has to give it to Hoffett. There were some numbers in board for the Borough. Instead, Hoffett will go longer. Gasper looking to jump again, but standing tall, taking a nice mark is Willis. Just another one of their experienced defenders is Mackenzie Willis, 26 years old. Played a little bit of uh, football for the Gold Coast Suns, five games. Uh, but they, just know, they just know when to come off their man, don't they, and intercept Southport defenders. Lockhart with what was essentially a catch and shoot there. Gow was going along the ground, through for a minor score. And once again, we see four or five Port Melbourne defenders coming off their man, almost in a goalkeeping role. Wagner with another kick in here for Port Melbourne. 45 point ball game. Approaching three quarter time. Not a great ball out from Wagner. Set Fletcher Roberts a task. Eli Templeton there to help. It's some pressure arriving late. Ball goes out of bounds. Fields was one of the Sharks involved in that contest. The other was Manseat, who's slow to get up, but he's okay. On the outskirts of 50 here for Southport. Looking for win number six. Turnover comes here. Lentini's been busy. Anastasio is targeted in the middle of ETU Stadium. O'Sullivan. Relatively empty 50 here. And just reading it much better in flight was Spencer. Against Signorello. Yeah, he's had a bit of a dirty day as Matt Signorello. It just hasn't been his day at all. Constantly getting picked off by the Southport defenders. And I can just see him now. He looks pretty frustrated as Matt Signorello. That was the three-quarter time siren here at ETU Stadium. 45-point lead for Southport, 11-9-75. It's a four more run. And their forward entries need to be a lot better. Seven times they were picked off in that quarter by Southport defenders. Final term underway, and even though Thurlow wins the tap, it'll be a Port Melbourne clearance. A very high ball from Templeton. Anastasio tracking it down. 
Gets around a corner, kept it low. Marks taken by O'Sullivan, then goes cheekily on the outside of the right boot to find Harvey Hooper. If he kicks a goal, this is the perfect start for Port Melbourne in the final term, Dan. Well, Adam Skrobelak wants him to make things happen. He doesn't want the ball to go in and come back out again. Come exactly what Tom O'Sullivan did there. Yeah, he really wants him to take the game on. Does Adam? Kicked a great goal in the third quarter, did Harvey Hooper. Just to give Port Melbourne a sniff. Wrong side of the post. Having said that, he was happy with the effort from his skipper, Tom O'Sullivan. And we mentioned that during the call in the third quarter. Three or four really brave efforts to win the ball in close. Spencer running out of the square for Southport toward the outer side we go. Ball comes to ground, Thurlow. He's perhaps trying to hand pass to a voice, but runs out of room. So the question from me to Southport is, will you keep up this relentless pressure? I know Steve Daniel, really proud coach of a, of a proud club. He would want them to keep it up for the whole game. We've got a big game next week against the Brisbane Lions. Port Melbourne has a bye, so... You can really go hard and enjoy the extra week's rest before their next game against the old rival in Williamstown. So they can go all out here, the Borough. Kick is smothered off the boot there nicely by Reinhold. It goes out of bounds for a boundary throw in. And Ethan Phillips once again reading the ball well off the boot. Great anticipation for a defender. Just didn't hold that mark, but I like his craft as a backman. Thurlow winning the tap, intended for Dawson, eventually finds its way through to Dawson, who goes inside 50, and nice mark taken by Crosley. Well, there we see it. Ethan Phillips, we give him a wrap, and what happens? His, uh, his opposing player takes a mark, but I think that's a, a really... Uh, I think it's a, a good challenge for him to actually play on a really big-bodied forward in Braden Crosley. He loves the goal, but hasn't got one today. This is not what Port Melbourne needs if they are any chance if Crosley scores here. He does, but only one. A couple of behinds to start this last quarter either way. Wagner running out of the square. He's had the kicking in duties all day today. Intended for Hooper. Coming late to affect the contest there was Willis. It comes to ground. Stackelberg left it behind. Underground ball for Anastasio. He fumbles as soon as he got the ball. Turnover comes. It's sent toward the four pocket but Wagner had plenty of space there on King kicking board from Kuchinotta comes to ground Cooper tried to fly for it O'Sullivan goes out wide Hoffett now in board Roberts plenty of space for Gasper same spot from where Harvey Hooper missed only moments ago And Adam Skrobelak did say, ask the question, ask the question to Southport, and they did it there. They did bring the ball back through the middle. It was a 50-50 contest, and now they're having a shot on goal. It doesn't work all the time for them. It hasn't come off because Southport have defended it so well today, but why not keep trying it? Jake Gaspar, goalless after kicking four against the Bull Ants last week. This needs to be a goal. It came off the instep, though. And it's marked on the last line of defence by Tate. Walker forcing a boundary throw in. Only the uh, five possessions for Seb Tate today. He normally just plays a, a lockdown role and lets his other tall defenders come off as the intercept marking options. All thrown in. Thurlow got rid of his man, but his kick was smothered. Picked up by Anastasio. I don't think it was touched. The umpire was calling. Clark not paid the mark and eventually went through for a minor score. Maurice Clark toward the outer side. It goes all the way through into the hands of Josh Williams. Comes off his line. No mark was taken. Fields under pressure. 
Salisbury tried to get a little kick forward. Turnover does come for Port Melbourne. Lentini spreads his hand pass out wide. Cucinotto going down the line. So, so far, so good on this build-up for Port Melbourne. Nice kick by Brisky. Templeton kicks on the way. It's going to land in the pocket. Roberts caught out of position. Searle does well. Gets it back. Now Manti. Forced out of the defensive 50 by Lockhart. That was a nice kick presenting and taking the mark. He's a man that's wearing a number I don't know about. That's a jumper change, I think. Number seven there. It could possibly, be, could possibly be Max Pescud, who did have that bloody yeah, nose in the third quarter. Like Pescud. So he's now in number seven. There is a Borough man that is out flat at the moment. Very slow to get up. He's Wagner. Quick shot at goal. I think it might have been Joyce there. I think he's got that. That's gone all the way. Bit happening. But Southport get the goal that probably kills this one off for good. It probably might be an understatement, Adam. But once again, just great uh, out of defence. Reese Clark on Fletcher Roberts there. Really composed, used the ball well. And as, as we said a number of times on this ground, you can get the ball from one end to the other really, really quickly. And Jesse Joyce having a shot for goal when 30, 40 seconds prior, it was in the defensive goal square. They've been very efficient and clean with their ball use today, Southport. Big game against the Lions coming up on Saturday. High ball from Stackelberg. Tough one to mark. Not sure Willis was interested in marking it. He was against Templeton in the contest. Here is the goal kicker, Joyce. Hand pass through the middle, finds its way to Woodcock, and now Williams. He goes out wide. Salesby gets it now. Didn't want to shoot, decides to pass instead, and Pescud will line up. Just another example of how they don't panic under pressure. They're really composed, Southport. Goalless today is Max Pescud. Came off with the blood rule in the third quarter, as you mentioned, Dan, in a new jumper number now. 11 goals for the year is now 12. A couple in a row for Southport. Rolicking their way to win number six for their season. I fear an absolute blowout here. I just hope Port Melbourne... They've got the mental resilience to turn this into a contest for the last 20 minutes of the game. 3.35 today. Port Melbourne's women will take on Collingwood. An ultimate round in the VFL women's competition. Some fans here have seen enough for the bar. Back in the middle. I don't think we've seen a Port Melbourne crowd so quiet. Yeah, interesting start time today, right, right on midday. Woodcock here getting the clearance for Southport. Gowers was falling over. Fraser Thurlow trying to work his way forward, but got tangled up. Woodcock gets it back out to Bokey. Stackelberg spins him in the tackle. Oh, boy, I said play on there. Must have got his hand pass out there, Bokey. Dawson then collides with Hooper and he's not getting up easily. I think the interpretation of the rule is if you are spun around, the reward should be given to the tackler. Must have been a clean handball out, according to the umpire. But I do Some like Fraser. Locals. I do like Fraser Thurlow's follow-up work at that stoppage. Yeah. I love it when a big guy can get involved at ground level. I say Dan, we're in among the crowd here today, and the locals have been all that pleased with the officiating today. I don't think it's matted. Southport clearly the better side out here. Ooh. Willis going around the corner, and that may as well be a goal oh. assist, although no mark was taken by Walker. He's made an absolute oh. mess of that. <laughs> Looking to go off the ground oh, yeah. is... Well, that's not a goal in the end for Manton. He's going to try and soccer it through for a tapping. Comedy of errors there. Foon for Pescu. Now thinking whether or not I go and visit 
Joan and Die at the canteen again, Adam, for another Borough Burger. Wow. Double up. Joan has been working here at Port Melbourne. Do they offer up the double stacker for the Borough Burger? Oh, that's uh, an extra five yeah, bucks. Or don't something. put that into my mind. Still a fair crowd around that canteen. Into attack we go, but it's a wayward ball out of bounds on the fault. The kick will be taken by Spencer. I was really looking forward to seeing Archie Manton play today, and he has taken a few nice contested marks, but unfortunately the ball just hasn't been in there enough. And if you report Melbourne forward, you'd be a little bit disappointed with the delivery into the forward line today. Spencer's allowed to run out of the fancy 50. Thurlow. Tried to claim the mark, although I think Gilmore did get a hand on it. Now Gowers takes a nice mark in the middle of ETU Stadium. Going deep. Crossley, too strong in front of Phillips. Hasn't been allowed to have as much impact in the air today, Ethan Phillips. And Crossley will get another look at goal here. Billy Gow has also been prominent today, Adam. 18 disposals, kicked a goal. Took a lovely mark there. I think Cody Stackelberg just needed to halve that contest. Braden Crosley the kicks that goal, Dan. Continue. What I have noticed, players like Billy Gowers, is their medium-sized forwards and backs are just so uh, so good at judging the ball in the air. Southport. Now they haven't dropped many today, and they just back themselves every time. We saw that with Billy Gowers then. So the margin's blown out to 61 points now. The Borough have a long time to think about this one before they take on Williamstown. In a couple of weeks' time. Crosley in ruck against Hoffett. Again, it'll be a Southport clearance. Although Gow is interesting decision to go by hand instead of foot. Dawson going out wide. Foon now Heron. Into attack once more. Woodcock oh. going back with the flight. That's a great mark for Boyd Woodcock. Exact same spot from where Crosley kicked the goal earlier. Was he thinking about playing on or is it maybe 50? Yep, 50 metres. Okay. So point blank range. Boyd Woodcock will kick his first. And as well as he's done today, Boyd Woodcock at the stoppages and around the ground. I think Steve Daniel will be really pointing that out. You know, what have we got? 13 minutes into the last quarter. You're 10 goals up and he's taking Wayne Carey like marks like that so that's really impressive from Boyd Woodcock, great leadership That's four goals in a row for Southport and we saw then again just an easy clearance even though Billy Gowers didn't distribute correctly, they just waltzed it out of the centre you just want to see something from Port Melbourne in this last half of this quarter just keep fighting for everything, don't concede anything are they at risk of losing this one by three figures? Port Melbourne now. Margins currently set at 67 points. Only Southport have been able to kick goals in a hurry. They're in danger of going down by a big, big margin here. Templeton will get this clearance after being handed the ball by Hooper. We go inside 50. Manton couldn't take it. In fact, it was claimed instead by Clark for Southport. Thurlow, Woodcock, Pescud now, Heron, nice build up by the Sharks, inside 50, Fields kick four in the first half, has been quiet since, Thune trying to find a way through, gets a little kick forward, Wagner tried to help it on to Reinhold, Wagner, almost a key fumble, Johnston's handball is wide, it goes out of bounds. And uh, Port Melbourne Ruckman Tom Hoffert, he's someone I'm looking at at the moment. He looks like he's running out of gas at the moment. He's just got to keep persisting. He looks like a, a baby giraffe in the zoo at the moment. Struggling to keep his feet, staggering around. And I can understand that if you're playing on a big fella like Fraser Thurlow. Probably got about 15 to 20 kilos on him in, in weight. 
Back to back throw ins here in the fall pocket. Thurlow had the ball just snatched out of his hand as he was about to fire away. There's another Borough down, but Borough, Borough player down behind play. It's Templeton's kick intended for Hooper. Bokey did well to affect the contest. Fields got a little kick forward. It comes back out. And now it's in the hands of Kuchinotta to Hooper. Quickly inside 50. Manson dropping it, but it might not matter. Zeus goes off the ground. It's trickling toward goal. And Heron plays goalkeeper. Falls over the fence for his effort. Minus score for Port Melbourne. Well, good ball movement, though, by Port Melbourne there. And Harvey Hooper is the man you want with the ball. He's, he's an elite kick. A long kick. And uh, unfortunately, Archie Man just couldn't benefit from his good work. Willis dropping the mark, but it's OK. He's got plenty of space. And time. Fields didn't keep it in play. It's been a really good contest since half time. Jackson Wiedemann and Tom Fields, similar players. That throw in was a bit skewed, I think. It definitely favoured Thurlow. Manti for Woodcock. Keeps it low. Gowers couldn't mark it, though. Phillips did well to get the hand pass out. Kuchinotta's kick into the middle. Signorello now Gaspar goes out wide. Anastasio can get it and run for Manton. Just for his own confidence as he try and kick a set shot here from a tough position. Good to see him, though, still running hard, Archie Manton. I know he's only had the five touches. But if he's going to keep working on his craft, he's got to learn that if he's got the 50 almost to himself, the only way he's going to find the ball is through his contested marking, which is a strength, or being able to move around on his defender. And the game was on the line earlier. He was spending a lot of time up the ground trying to make something happen through the middle. And this won't register a score. He's a big fan of the LA Lakers, is uh, Archie Manton. Good year for the Lakers. Out of, what is it now? The Crypto.com Arena, I think. The old Staples Centre. Low ball. Well, Sullivan for Lentini. Touched off the boot, and that would have hurt. Callum Searle did get a hands on it. Signorello has the ball here for the Borough. Just can't find a way through. Williams got the tackle on him. No free kick was called for. Tape going out wide by hand. Archie Manton still trying to affect the contest. Has it fallen out of play here? Kuchinotta did claim it. No, it's going to be his ball. Yeah, Callum Searle, a victim of his own bravery there. He's still on his haunches. Hopefully he's okay. Doesn't look in a great way and he might be coming off the ground. Knows these parts so well, of course. He kicked a goal earlier in the game and every single teammate got around him. This one lands at the top of the square. Now Seb Tape. Might have hurt himself as he punched that one through for a minor score. Michael Manteet coming up for disposal number 21. Clark. Oh, what a great ball for Gowers who lays the tackle. In the back, shot at goal coming up for Port Melbourne. At the bottom of the pack. I think he was just so frustrated. With the, he, was, he was just so frustrated with his own error there, Billy Gowers, that he his passion got in the way and he, he's given that free kick away to Cody Stackelberg. To make it an even ten goal deficit. Yeah, I don't know how to describe that one. He just floated that one through the sticks. There was just enough on it to get over the line, Dan Winkle. It was uglier than my first girlfriend, that one. Uh, <laughs> but it's effective. First goal of the season for Cody Stackelberg. Busy day in Smithy's VFL. We'll try and get a look at what is happening around the grounds. Gold Coast Suns 11-12-78 leading Footscray 9-6-60. Swans 
Had a really good start against Coburg. It's been a relatively even game since. A halftime score there, 11 4 70 to 6 5 41. And the Seagulls have got a little jump out against Brisbane. Uh, Morton Bay, 2 6 18 to 1 4 10. And in about 15 minutes from now, we're going to see the Tigers taking on Essendon in the Dreamtime curtain raiser on this Sir Dark Nichols round. Joyce tried to get it to Lockhart. Templeton gets it back though for Port Melbourne. It's just left behind there by Cameron. High contact and a free kick. Adam Boyd Woodcock, uh, Boyd Woodcock stoppage work. He's just elite, always on the move, reads the play brilliantly. I think that's his seventh clearance for today. Another entry here for Southport. Salsby pulls it down. Michael Salsby looking for his first goal of the day. He's played the six games this year, Michael Salsby. Only kicked the one goal. Small forward. He'd like to get his name on the scoreboard after this. It's a goal. Right. Made the goal umpire work, but he has kicked it. 65 point lead for Southport. And that was just another example of a, a smaller player or a smaller to medium type player with a great set of hands. They, they are great in the air. Their marking craft is exceptional. It's been one of the key differences in this game, Dan, hasn't it? How cleanly they've been able to find targets inside forward 50 as opposed to the repeatedly dirty entries that Port Melbourne have been getting all day long. Yeah, but those dirty entries are just coming off the back of just outstanding uh, defensive pressure from Southport. So we're well and truly into junk time here. Big win coming up for the Sharks. Lentini getting a high clearance. And while he was already on the deck, that's a really impressive mark that's been taken by Walker. Campbell Walker wants to line up for goal for the Borough. Only, so directly in front here, Dan Winkle. Only his seventh possession for the game. Walker got pretty close to the man on the mark. Covered the distance pretty well, but he has missed. Clark with the quick kick into Foon. Good game next week between Southport and Brisbane to look forward to at Morton Bay, Dan. Yep, two teams up the top end of the ladder. Good mark taken by Gilmore here. Now Mac Willis has the ball. Which Just ground will wax a little bit here? Which ground will that be played at? Adam? Morton Bay, I think I saw oh, on Morton the AFL Bay, website. Okay. And that's where uh, Williams Town are currently playing the Lions. Is that right? I believe so. It looks like a relatively low scoring game there at the moment. Maybe uh, I was talking to Cam from Southport, the, the team manager for Southport, and he says that in the last month and a half it's just been constant rain up there on the Gold Coast. So uh, we might also be seeing that in Brisbane as well. With some really low scores coming through from games in Queensland of late. So Seth Tape receives the 50 metre penalty here. Looking to extend the lead out to 70 points. It's not a great kick. It's the old saying, kicked it like a backman. Wagner. It's been kicking in all day. Runs around Gowers. Takes two bounces. Runs all the way to the defensive 50 arc before disposing and oh, finds man. Eli Templeton. Where has this marking been all day? Around 50 for the Barra. Templeton inside 50. Signorello finally on the end of one. A nice kick by Templeton, but equally a great lead by Signorello. He does have great forward craft. Sometimes you'll see he's got that, just that step ahead of his defender. And on that occasion, when the ball was coming in, you could see that he was clearly going to take that mark. Signorello is going to go around the corner and kick a goal. We, 
have a look at some of the stats numbers here for Port Melbourne forwards, you've got Fraser Roberts, oh, sorry, Fletcher Roberts with six disposals, Archie Manton with six, Jake Gasper with four, Signorello with seven, so just goes to show that ball really hasn't been in that forward line too often, and when it has, the Gold Coast defenders, have, the, Gold Coast defenders the Southport defenders have been able to intervene and whisk it out the other side. Well, they are on the Gold Coast, aren't they, Southport? So it's half right. That's caught me out a couple of times as well. Remember calling their game against Footscray. It was a late call up because of that delayed flight. And I think accidentally called them the Gold Coast a couple of times in that game. All up again. Crosley around the corner and Heron juggles a nice mark. Doesn't want to shoot though. Gow is his target. And Terrific looking goal. to finish does well Tom Reeves in his second VFL game. Kicks a goal. Well, a great front and square there from Tom Reeves. Only had the seven touches, but his two goals will certainly be on the highlights reel. A couple of check side, one from the boundary in that third quarter, and then that great front and square goal there. It's still, leading ball getters on the ground, dominated by Port Melbourne. 26 for Wagner, 25 for Lantini. Templeton has 24, Hooper 23, and O'Sullivan 22. The only shark in among all of that is Boyd Woodcock on 25. I'm going to watch him closely here at this centre clearance. Boyd Woodcock, number one. Yep, it's just behind Crosley here. It's coming his way. Lentini got a hands on. Here is Woodcock. Got pounced on by a number of Borough players there. Dawson. Willis. Intended for Salisbury. Wiedemann got a fist on it. Heron. Been busy in the last quarter. It's a bouncing ball in the pocket. Pescud outside of the right boot. That's a nice finish. They're just enjoying a beautiful Saturday afternoon out in the sun now. Yeah, they've kicked so many goals with so little pressure. I'd, I'd just be so disappointed if I was one of the defensive coaches at Port Melbourne. You just can't concede easy goals. It's two goals now for Max Pescu today. Both in this last quarter. On the other hand, if that was in the Port Melbourne forward line, the Southport defenders most likely would have killed that ball and made it an even contest. Seventy-one point ball game. Not a great bounce. It's just a matter of time, Dan, before the AFL decides not we're probably done with this centre bounce. A lot of umpires struggling with it these days. Okay, you, you think it will happen? I think it should happen. Does it eliminate some of the craft of the Ruckman? I'm sure the spectators are coming to watch Ruckcraft. Dan, that's just my personal opinion. Inside 50, Cinderella takes another mark. I'm not sure. We've got Crackers Keenan uh, standing in front of us, about 10 metres in front think, of us. I don't think you would. I might... Uh, so I might... we're watching as well. Yep. she played for Port Melbourne. Yeah, yep. I might ask Crackers after the game what... What does he think about the uh, centre bounce? I'm actually... Uh, I just don't think it adds anything to the game these days. It's a really tough skill for umpires to execute. Well, Signorello having a shot. We'll get back on our soapbox in a minute, Dan. Signorello misses. So we are the only sport in the world that asks our officials to execute a ball skill. And it's a very hard skill to execute. Why, why does the game need it? Well, I think it's more about the players and the umpires. I think it's an actual, it's a skill of the game. Uh, and the good ruckmen do it really well. I'm not sure just by throwing it up as a 50-50 what that really adds to the game. Remember, we have had so many changes in the ruck anyway. Anastasio, can he get a late one? Dribbling, but missing. 
you know, we remember what, nearly over 20 years ago when Sean Wren hurt his knee and there were some ruck changes there. Yep. Uh, you know, if you look at some old VFA and AFL, or sorry, sorry VFL footage, you'll see that the ruckman could have come from either side. And you might be right, though. We have seen some ruckmen who have been injured of late. And there may be some rule changes on the way, but I hope the bounce is not one of them. I, I, I prefer to keep it in. To me, it's just, we see so many bounces recalled these days. It's just an unnecessary disruption to the game. It happens far too often. We can take this outside, Adam, if you like. We can. It's just this game's well and truly <laughs> over. Port Melbourne trying to sneak another late one. They are inside 50 at the moment. Signorello has been involved in this last quarter. And Astasio, one way in the other, missed his dribble moments ago. This is a right foot snap that does go through for the little double A battery. Yeah, I'd be very surprised if Anthony Anastasio is not in Port Melbourne's best or, in fact, named their best player. He's been really impressive today. He's been sharp, he's been creative, taking the game on. He's a couple of goals. Yeah, his numbers 18 touches, those two goals, two. It's taken five marks as well and laid a couple of tackles. When I referred to take it outside, Adam, that was more a reference to uh, a movie I watched recently, Goodwill Hunting. Oh, yeah. Where he challenges the. Uh, Holds up, does it? It does. That's a great movie. Challenges, uh, challenges the, uh, the frat guy and with the Michael Bolton type ponytail. Anyway, back to the football. That's not recalled that one. It definitely favoured Crosley. Dawson. Had really? a long time to get rid of that ball. Back to Crosley. Over the head of Thurlow. Fields. Unable to gather it. This will be a ball up. So a week off for the Borough. Does that come at a good time before that big grudge match against the old rivals, Seagulls? We should answer that in a minute, Dan. Johnston around the corner. Well, I'd be interested to see how uh, Williamstown end up against the Brisbane Lions up there in Queensland at the moment. Try and get a live score from that one shortly. Because if you think if Williamstown do lose that one, it'll be on for young and old in, in a fortnight's time. I did uh, watch Williamstown have a win against the Gold Coast Sun and Suns a few weeks ago. They were really desperate for that win. They hadn't had a win up until then. Seagulls leading by eight points against Brisbane up at Morton Bay. This kick goes inside 50. And that's it. Southport comes and conquers Northport. And they beat the Borough very handsomely in the end by 63 points. And they move to 6-2 and two on the ladder in Smithy's VFL.